message on the text line to preempt our next guest. He said, I'm sure you all covered this, but how awesome would it be for Southern Miss to win national championship three teams in a row from Mississippi? Jason Baker joins us right now. If you watch Southern Miss games, you've heard him, and you see him right now on the stream at supertalk.fm or supertalk TV and also on your radio across the state. Jason, what's up? Yeah, that here, here's a dumb question. How cool would that be? Yeah, it'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Uh, boy, wouldn't it be a storyline uh, of all storylines for history sort of to repeat itself? Of course, the story's been well documented, the 09 run when Corky Palmer decided to retire. And, of course, now you got the news of Scott Berry retiring. And then, man, just to even think about that possibility. And, of course, right now they're, they're one of, what, 64 teams uh, yeah. with at least a small fractional chance uh, of that happening. So let's start here with the regional draw. When you first won, when you first learned that there was not going to be a regional in Hattiesburg, what were your thoughts? And then two, when you saw the draw, what were your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts originally with no host, Borky, to be honest with you, wasn't very shocking. Um, I sort of thought like, hey, when you started seeing the teams that they were selecting, it was very obvious that committee just looked at RPI and said, this is the determining factor that we're going to use. And you know, I think there's been one team outside of the top 20 that has gotten a host in years past in terms of RPI ranking. I don't recall which team that is, but Southern Miss was sitting there around 23, 24 on Sunday ahead of the championship. And I thought maybe they could bump to 20, maybe to 19 in the last segment. I think hey, that hit it. I think if they played and were able to beat Coastal on that Sunday, then you would have looked at a head-to-head against Coastal of two wins, two losses versus You know, right now it's still two wins and one loss in terms of Coastal versus Southern Miss this season. So it didn't shock me um, that the host didn't come to Hattiesburg. And then when I look at the regional, you know, I think of all the SEC teams that you could have been placed amongst. Um, If I'm honest, Auburn's the one that I would have I would have chosen. I think Alabama's playing a higher caliber of baseball right now, which is sort of the other regional that I, I thought you would have matched up with and. Um, if you're just making me choose between Alabama and Auburn, then hey, let's let's go to Auburn. When you look at this Southern Miss team, you know, top to bottom, they've played incredible baseball for the, for the last two months, and it's one of those things where you know you want to be playing your best baseball at the end. They started playing it really, really early. Do they have another week, two weeks in them of playing at this level? I, I think I think so, Brian. Like I, I think you know the key to that to me is literally like you're only as good as the next day starting pitcher, right? So like, I mean, you know, if this hot streak and, and, you know, playing well is going to continue, it's going to continue tomorrow with Tanner Hall on the bump. And then the baseball gets passed to, you know, let's say it's Billy Oldham on Saturday, then, you know, and Billy Oldham's going to pass it to Will Armistead. That's sort of how I view it. Yes, they've played at the high level. Um, You're right over the last month, but, there's still some things and some makeups in their game that I think could be even better. I thought they played better defense in the first half of the year than they have in the second half of the year. I think defense will be one of those critical components that doesn't always get brought up. Um, Southern Miss, this has been a better fielding team than of years past during Scott Berry's tenure, but I still think they can take a step forward. I think they're really, really talented in certain spots, and those spots have to play well. And I think some of that starts behind the dish with Blake Johnson and Rodrigo Montenegro. We'll give you the big question that we've been asking. We asked it to Scott Barry. We've been talking about it here on the show. If I gave you the lineup card, what are we doing on the mound in game one? Man, if so I'll answer this in a personal opinion kind of way. I would probably roll the dice and try to hold Tanner Hall, if I'm honest. What do I think Scott Berry is going to do? Tanner Hall is grabbing that baseball tomorrow because that's what history has shown that Scott Berry has done in the years past. And, you know, I think that's the safe bet. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it. Like, you don't want to disrespect your opponent because really and truly, like, let's, let's just be honest. I don't know that you win a regional without winning the first game. I, I just think it's so vital to set yourself up into that winner's bracket on Saturday afternoon, let alone it doesn't make you have to play early in in a loser's bracket game. I just, man, it just really sets you up to get you some rest and just kind of play on like your normal weekend schedule. So I think Scott Berry will give the baseball to Tanner Hall. If it was me, 
just knowing, I guess, who possibly the next opponent could be, man, I, I'm not so sure, Brian, I wouldn't roll the dice and, and certainly try it. Evans knows he would be the best pitcher on the – he's going to be the best pitcher on the mound all weekend, in my opinion. It's Tanner Hall. So yeah, for sure. Roll the dice. Could you roll the dice and let him be on game two? It's a roll of the dice because you would, boy, you would be awfully disrespecting Sanford if you did that, in my opinion. So uh, let's pretend that he does pitch tomorrow. Uh, One o'clock, by the way. We haven't gotten the announcement yet. I I wonder if uh, if Coach Barry's kind of playing his cards a little bit over at South Carolina. um, Oh, gosh, his name's escaping me. The coach at South Carolina, anyway, today said that uh, whoever pitches tomorrow will be somebody on my current roster. So maybe Scott Barry's just going with that. And, and, hey, somebody will pitch tomorrow. You, you'll have to see. But uh, let's pretend that he does go and they do win. Auburn, at least as we understand it, is holding their ace uh, for game two. What would be the best uh, counterpunch from Southern Miss in that situation? Yeah, I don't think what – I, what I will say this, I don't think you're going to see a shuffling of the cards of the rotation that I'm aware of. Um, I think it's Billy Oldham, um, who's been really good at times. I know maybe not of late has he been just quite as sharp. But when he's good, he's really, really good. Look, he's carried a couple of perfect games, five innings and beyond. I mean, really and truly, if you can, let's say Tanner Hall puts you in that winner's bracket for game two uh, in this regional and you hand the baseball to Billy Oldham. At that point, I think really what you're asking Billy to do is get you five innings, and then you can get him out of there. And he's proven over the course of the season that he can do that. And to me, I don't, I don't want to see a shuffling of the cards. I know there's some thoughts like, hey, maybe give the baseball to Will Armistead because he's a hot arm right now. But I think he's relished the long relief role. So is Nico Maz. This is a regional that sort of screams like it could be headed for a Monday kind of finish. And I I just think you you have some pieces on the back end that you could utilize on that Monday. And, you know, you just take it one game at a time. I, I don't really like the shuffling of the cards of the rotation because they've been that way for three months now. Why change now? Yeah, we haven't really talked about it in, in any way. But, you know, we're coming on to the end of a, of a legendary career for Scott Barry one way or the other. Uh, you know, hopefully it ends up in Omaha, but if it doesn't, if it ends this weekend, ends this weekend. When you talk to players, how much of that, hey, we want to win for Scott, is there from them? I think it's there when they're asked. I think, you know, it's there when, you know, poked and prodded to get out of them. You, you guys know this, and y'all, y'all have watched so much sports and covered so many sports to know. it's It can't be this way when the baseball's rolled out there that, you know, a Carson Pato stepping in the box thinking, oh, this may be Scott Berry's last at bat. If so, my opinion, this will be a very short regional stay for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. It, it almost has to be, you know, in your mind at the hotel, in your mind, maybe, you know, when you're laying around the dugout and just, you know, chatting up different people. But at the end of the day, like, hey, man, there's still 27 outs to get and we've got to score one more run than the end. And, and if I'm honest, you know, Scott Berry's not going to take a single swing and and a single pitch to do that. And so I think it's, you know, yes, it's there. And yes, they're going to get asked about it. And uh, certainly, hey, Dad, there's a moment where it is going to end and and they'll be even more asked about that, uh, obviously, for obvious reasons. But I I don't think it's like in their mind, it's not their rallying cry. Their rallying cry is to get to Omaha and and to compete for a national championship. Sure, it just so happens it's, it's going to be on a, you know, hopefully a historical run, you know, for the end for Scott Berry. And this is an experienced team too, right? I mean, aside from from that, and that's a big deal, don't get me wrong, Scott Berry retiring is a very big deal. That aside, it's not like these guys haven't seen the exact thing that they are walking into this weekend. This is not new territory for this extremely experienced baseball team. Oh, I completely agree. And if, if I'm honest, I think the probably a bigger factor, maybe more than the rallying cry of Scott Berry retiring. The bigger thing to me to hang your hats on is that they get to harken back to experience of winning a regional, albeit last year in their park. But look, they knocked off one of the pillars in college baseball and LSU. And look, it was guys that were in that lineup doing it. Chris Sargent, Blake Johnson, Danny Lynch, 
Tanner Hall pitched on that Monday. You know, it's guys back on that back end as well that got some experience. Nico Mazza pitched in the Super Regional against Ole Miss. I think, to me, that is a much greater factor in this weekend against Auburn than the rallying cry of Scott Berry. Not that that doesn't, like you said, Borg, not that that's not a big story, not that that doesn't mean something in a lot, because certainly there's going to come an end, whether it's an end with a win or it's an end with a loss, that'll be determined. But at, at the end of the day, to me, the, the bigger experience factor is, hey, you got a two seed in your regional that won a regional a year ago, you know, against LSU, a really quality Army and Kennesaw State team. I thought it was one of the tougher regionals a year ago. And that team was able to come out of it and then, of course, you know, go on against, you know, the eventual national champions in that super regional. That's Jason Baker, broadcast other Miss Sports. Uh, you've heard.